All right, everybody. We've been working on creating a nice nav bar. We did a, a horizontal nav bar using Flexbox. And I showed you how you can create a, um, a vertical nav bar with Flexbox with just a turn of a little bit of code. Today, I'd like to talk about responsive web design. And what I mean by that, we're going to take a look at W3 Schools. They have a whole section on CSS responsive. This is part of um, uh, part of a way of making your websites uh, a good um, user interface for all different types of devices. So if you're on a desktop, and you're, we're going to try to design it such a way that on a desktop it might look one way. When you're on a tablet, it might be a little different. So like you see that blue bar is now underneath. And when you're on a phone, then your nav bar might just totally fill out the screen. We're going to do it where we have the horizontal nav bar on a desktop and a tablet sideways. But then as we get smaller on our devices and we want run out of room, at some point we're going to run out of room on here. Okay, Right about here, we run out of room and we have to scroll left to right. And, and is that annoying or what? You ever get on a cell phone and you have to scroll to get your text? No one likes to do that. Don't be that web designer. Okay. All right. You, know, you now will know better after watching this video, possibly video series. The first thing we're going to take a look at is this idea of the viewport. And uh, the viewport is just that the screen that we're looking at when we look at our window. And the first thing we need to do is add this meta tag. And what this does is it sets what's called the initial scale to 1. And it detects sort of the width of the screen. And it's going to allow us to do a lot with it. And the first thing, of course, is you look at the example it, this is that this is that web designer did that right where they you go on a mobile device and you can't read the text or you have to scroll left to right. This is without the viewport meta tag. We add it in and suddenly that's a lot more usable, a lot easier to read. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is add this meta tag. This has to go into the head of every web page on your site. So let's get our web page open and let's put that in. I've got my editor open. I'm going to just work, walk down through my files alphabetically, top to bottom. So I start with CSS. The meta tag can go anywhere in the head. It's probably best to do after the title. Where you put it is entirely up to you. It doesn't make a huge difference as long as it's in the head. So I put it as the last item in the head. And do that for HTML as well while rhyming. Index. And in my case, JavaScript, the last link, save my changes. Oh, I got to save it for all of these. There should be a file save all, and there is. So I get them all saved. And really, there's not a lot of change we're going to see at this point. Okay. But what we want to do now is get the real interesting part. We're going to take a look at what's called media queries. Okay. So once we have this, we, we want to have this in place before we can do what's called media queries. Now, a media query is a way of detecting the width of the screen. What I mean by that, let me just show you. I'm going to open up a page, and I'm going to open up the developer tools. Okay, And I want to look, I believe it's at computed, and I want to zoom out a little bit on this tool. And let's see what happens. We're going to do some resizing of the screen. Now, when I resize, you'll see this pop up on the top. You'll see the width, 626 pixels. That's the width of this screen. Okay. So what we can do is we can take a look at the, the screen here. And remember, we're talking about responsive design. I want to get to the part where, let me just scroll this, drag this down. I want to get to the part where there's no longer a margin here or here. And the moment that that uh, horizontal nav bar pops open, I'm going to squeeze in here, and at a certain part, there, it appeared. If you have a horizontal scroll bar, you are too narrow. You've got to start changing your layout. So we got to figure out exactly what point, or roughly what point, it turns into that. And when we get right about here, it says 911 pixels. There is no horizontal nav bar. So keep that number in mind. Your website may be different. 911 happens to be the, the key for mine with my typography the way I have that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so anything more narrow than that is not going to have a width set as an EM. It'll just be 100% width or maybe like a 98% width, some kind of a width that will allow it to fit in the screen and not have to scroll ever again. Okay. So that's what the, the idea of these media queries are about. It lets you identify how wide is the screen. And you do it by at creating this whole set of code here, CSS code. This at media means we're talking about the media or the screen when we're on a screen device. At print would mean when you're going to print your web page out. In this case, we're talking about the screen. You have this at media only screen and maximum width of 500 pixels. So we can set it up maximum width, minimum width. We can do it like this. And then you notice there's a curly bracket here and a closing curly bracket here. That means everything within these brackets are your styles. Okay. Now, in order to play off of this, we're going to take a look at our style sheets here. And I just want to remind you that typography is where we set the width right here. Right there. So you want to keep that in mind. You got to, you got to understand where are you changing these different elements and make sure you are aware of that as you're making your changes. Now before we do, I want to talk just a little bit more and there's this idea of a breakpoint. That 9-11 is a breakpoint, the point where suddenly my design breaks. If I go more narrow than 9-11, it breaks. Now, there's some philosophies of how you add your breakpoints. You'll notice you have this here for desktop, all of these styles, and then you have this at media only screen and maximum width of 76, 768 pixels for mobile phones. Okay. Now, there's a problem with this, and that is they are designing for the desktop first. And it's not necessarily evil or wrong, but you should be aware that for the last several years, more people are accessing the web on mobile devices than they are on their desktop computers. So a huge movement in the, over the past few years has been what's called mobile first. So I recommend we do it the opposite way. I say we make everything mobile and then only when we want to get a wider screen do we branch out. So we're going to kind of do the opposite method of what you see here. Enough about that. Let's just do it. Okay. Now, the only thing we want to change on our mobile screen is we want to make it so we have a vertical nav bar on really narrow screens and then a horizontal nav bar for as wide as we can get it. We're going to end up with probably two main breakpoints. The first one is when we can make our nav bar horizontal. The next one is when we are going to change our, uh, we're going to add this uh, margin on the left and on the right. So really the only things we have to change is the width of the page on a mobile device and the style of nav bar on a mobile device. So if we're going to do mobile first, pretty much all of our styles are good to go. The only thing we're going to change is we're going to add this at the breakpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to click cut. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little comment here. Mobile first. Okay. All of these styles are good for mobile except for the next part here. Okay. Now I've kind of written down here in the corner, so we're going to have to hit enter a few times. I want to scroll. And we're going to start doing desktop views. So that's the at media. I think it's screen only, but let's just double check on the code. So since it, we're going to talk about desktop views, we're going to put only screen. And, and this time we're going to do a minimum width. Min width. 911 pixels. Just like that. Okay, and we're going to add our styles in here. Let's just move this over here. Okay, so notice, now we copied that page width 40 EM margin zero auto. So I paste it into here and I tab everything over once so it's readable. And I save my changes. And then um, let's go up here and for 
Uh, body, we're going to set the width on the body itself. And we're just going to put like a 98% width on the body. You know what? We should probably set it on page just to be safe. We're going to set automatic margins on the left and right. So 2% of the screen will be the margin. And we're going to go back to the page and hit refresh. You shouldn't see a change at this size. But as soon as we go more narrow, you're going to notice there's no horizontal nav bar, or there's no horizontal scroll bar. You see, no horizontal scroll bar. So we've actually fixed it. And now we're getting to the part where we're almost ready to drop in our horizontal only nav bar. And we're looking for where that minimum width is. We're looking at what looks like about 508 pixels. Okay. Notice on this very narrow screen, everything looks good, right? We're good to go. So it looks like about 507 is uh, anything less than that is where uh, we want it to become a vertical nav bar. And we're probably going to want to resize this nav bar as well. So we have to go to the navigation style sheet to do that. Remember, we're doing mobile first, right? So all of this is mobile first except for just one minor change. Well, we may find it's more than a minor change. For now, we're going to look at it. And as you may recall, it's this flex direction right here. Flex direction under the main nav bar UL. That was row. We're going to need to change this to column. So watch what I do. I'm going to copy all of this. All right. Actually, I don't even need to copy. Well, I'll just copy this right here. I'm going to change row to column so that on mobile first, it'll be a column. And then we'll make some other changes in a moment. We're going to have to do this incrementally. So I scroll down here and we do mobile portrait oh no no more uh, I'm sorry I'll just put horizontal nav bar you want to write comments so you know what it is you're doing it's going to be very helpful later at media only screen and and we're going to do that min width again and I believe it was 511 pixels oops like so and now I paste main nav bar ul and it was flex direction I believe yep and now we're going to do row so anyway, once I put that in and I resize, notice we've got our horizontal nav bar. I pull it out. We got, or I, I'm sorry, we had the vertical on the narrow, and then we've got the horizontal on the wide. So that pretty much covers it, and we can talk more about other styles, but adding a responsive really just begins with adding those. You've got to have both the viewport meta tag, like so, and I recommend you do mobile first, so you design all of your styles for the mobile display first. Then as you expand out, you add your media queries and you move the things out there that are designed for the wider screen, such as a horizontal nav bar or margins on the left and right. And that's all I have to say about that.